Hello. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Um, let's see. Oh, no. All right. I think we're all live now. Um, maybe it's still loading. So give it a second here. Goodness. I feel like the smarter technology gets, the less <laughs> I get it. And then I start to use it and I'm like, nope, I don't, it doesn't make sense anymore. Um, so welcome everyone. I'm so glad you're here. My name is Crystal. I'm with the Dog Psychology and Training Center. And last week we had a comment on one of our last Facebook videos, Facebook Lives, um, from my aunt Beth. So this one's for you, Beth. Um, that is how to stop your dog from barking at windows. And in addition to that, uh, not lunging like they're going to break through your window, barking at these passerbys. So there's a lot of things to this. So we're going to kind of break it down and start with the basics. And you have to build up to this. Remind you is, um, you know, dog training in and of itself is simple concepts. But simple doesn't always mean easy, right? Like you actually have to put the time in. And it does take time. Um, and so I want you to have that same um, patience with dog training that you would have with anything else in life. So I'm gonna make sure real quick I have sound. Okay, good. Um, so um, I'm using a, a slightly new getup here and I wanted to make sure you guys could hear me because I have done Facebook Lives through and the whole time I didn't have sound or you didn't have sound. So, um, so again, thanks for joining me. Today's Facebook Live is going to be about barking, impulse control, and just starting with those basics. So the very, very basic thing that's missing when your dog, any dog, is barking at the windows, pacing from window to window, just waiting at someone to bark at, or escalating to the point where they are like diving at the window, like, oh, and gee, they might break through is a lack of communication and trust. All dogs know their owners love them, but they don't know because their owners don't speak dog, that their owners are capable of taking care of everything. Most dogs, not all, but most dogs are kind of like myself. We're kind of control freaks, right? And they feel like if you're not taking care of it the way they think it needs to be done, then they need to take care of it. And so they lack that impulse control to trust you and to know that it's going to be okay just because you don't speak dog and you haven't been able to communicate that with them. So we have some easy steps to help you communicate and build that trust and that relationship so you can get your dog from where they are now, where they look, hear, and see this, or look, see, like look and see is the same thing, goodness. Look, hear, and smell the world through their own senses and say, I want to do that. I want to do this about that. I want your dog to go to the next level, like with your children, where they see things that look really fun, like maybe going to a football game, but they know they just can't go without permission. They need to check in with you and say, hey, so there's a football game on Friday. It looks really fun. Can I go with so-and-so? And they have that trust and that communication with you to get that permission. And I want your dogs to have that. So if somebody is walking by your house, I want your dog to look at you. They'll probably have panic in their eyes. So they're looking away. They'll look at you and they'll be like, hey, did you hear that? Did you see that? Like, what do you want me to do? And you have the, then you have the chance to say, go lay down. It's totally fine. They're just walking by the house or yeah, they look kind of shady and suspicious and they're actually approaching the house. So yeah, bark, do your dog thing. Right. Um, and so I want you to have that relationship with your dog. And so this, the steps that I'm going to tell you are going to start to build on that relationship. But the other thing is, um, impulse control. Anybody else lack some impulse control in life? Mean chocolates. I can't handle it. If I walk down the chocolate aisle, I'm going to get some chocolates. If I just avoid the aisle, I, I don't actually have to buy chocolates. But if I'm there, they're in my cart. I can't help it. So um, dogs lack impulse control, just like I do with chocolate. I have put some boundaries in place, like avoiding the aisle altogether, um, that have improved my chocolate addiction and I want your dog to have some impulse control options as well and so how we start with this surprisingly doesn't involve your window or passerbys at all yet and just like anything in life when you are learning something new is usually jumping off the deep without knowing how to swim right like you want to start with some basics and build off of that and that's exactly how dog training is. If you start so deep, you and your dog are both going to drown. You're going to hate each other. You're going to hate training together. And that is not at all what training should be like. It should be fun. It should be progressive. You should see 
victories, if you see failures or non-successful um, exercises, that's okay. It's a learning experience. So now, okay, so like me walking down the chocolate aisle, it doesn't mean I failed at life, but I did fail at putting like five chocolate bars. And when I say I have a chocolate bar addiction, it's not like Snickers, like I'm talking like the like organic, like endangered species chocolates that are like, <laughs> like four bucks a bar. Um, it's a big problem. It, it hurts the bank account for sure. But, um, but that that is something that we need to start small and work our way up to. So the first thing I want you to do is to always have your dog on a leash in the house when you are home. So if you are not home, the leash comes off. If your dog's going outside to go party, potty and you have a fenced in backyard, get the leash off so they don't get it snagged on something and hurt themselves. But in the house, when you are home, that leash is on and dragging around them. And when we are actually doing our exercises, the leash needs to be in your hand. Do not trust your dog for a second and have that leash out of your hand because if they break command and then you have to chase them to grab the leash and then repeat the command, they just won, right? And so you want to win all of these little battles so that you can win the war on your dog's impulse control. Make sense? Okay. So the other thing I want to talk about before we get started is what we call the distraction ladder. Everything in life has them. We, the distraction ladder is basically a ladder with the lowest rung being the easiest thing you think your dog can succeed with. So if we're talking about a sit command, again, having the leash on your dog in your hand, having your dog sit. When we say sit, the stay is implied. I don't say sit, stay. I just say sit and the dog will keep sitting until I give the dog permission not to sit anymore. And the word we use for that is break. So break means you're free. You can do whatever you want. But when I say sit, you keep sitting until I tell you otherwise. That being said, especially for larger breed dogs, medium to larger breed dogs, we don't ask them to sit for more than a few minutes at a time because it's just not necessary. So sit is generally a brief command of only a few minutes at a time, but they cannot get up until you give them permission to. And if you don't care if your dog slides into a down command with the sit, I don't care either. It can be, you can say sit and sit can mean sit, lay down or sit. It just means stay in this one spot, right? That's totally fine too. I really don't care. Um, so if we're working with the sit command using the distraction ladder, the simplest thing would be having your dog sit as you start to walk a circle around them in one direction. For some dogs, it's a piece of cake. For other dogs, they're like, hey, what are you doing walking behind me? And they want to break their sit command to turn around to see what you're doing. When they do that, you're just going to use your leash and guide them back to that spot that they were sitting at, maybe apply a little bit of pressure up so it kind of forces their, their chest area up and the bottom goes down and then they sit back down and you may resume that circle. You keep doing that, one, try not to get dizzy, but you keep doing that until your dog is sitting there like rolling his eyes like, oh, this person's crazy. They're always walking in circles. And then we do a curveball. This is really funny. Turn and go the other way. And you would think, and by the way, you're, you're letting your dog be released intermittent goal. You may say break, your dog gets to get up. You get to praise them, love them, give them treats, pet them, um, talk to them, whatever their love language is. I want you to reward them lavishly with that love language as they progress. If they did a mm, job, then their love language reward is going to be minor. So if they did a mm, job, I'd like, good, that's it. If they did an amazing job, like they were struggling as I walked my circle and then I finally walked my first circle around the dog and they didn't break, I would say break and I would get down on the ground and I would scrub their ears and kiss their face and tell them, this is a good dog, you did such a good job. I want them to know that reward, that good behavior gets huge rewards, right? And so I want them to keep striving to be better and to get better at this. Um, so start with that walking command. When your dog's mastered you going one direction, then start to go the other direction. And I don't know why, but for almost every dog, they're like, wait, why are you going that direction? What's different? And they want to break the command again. Um, and so making sure you walk one way, they can do it. Great. Now walk the other way. Great. Release them. Job well done. And you want to keep building on this. You're not going to do this all in one day. This is going to take several days or several reps throughout the day, but you should spend about five, five to 10 minutes max on just this little exercise. Escalating would be going up to, if your dog loves treats, start with toys. If your dog is a fanatic for toys, start with treats. And you're gonna drop them behind your back, again, holding your dog's leash so your dog can hear it hit the ground. And then once your dog's not bolting to break his sit command, you're gonna drop it off to the side. So it's in front of them, but next to you. So it's still away from them. And then you're gonna drop it right in front of you. And you should be about a foot and a half to two feet away from your dog. You don't wanna drop it right in front of their, <laughs> their head because some dogs are smart enough. They'll just catch it right out of the air without breaking their sit command. 
kudos to them. That's my kind of dog doing what you're asked and still getting what they want. But anyways, dropping a little bit farther away. And the purpose of this exercise, when we drop it, we're not monsters. Sometimes if your dog bolts to get up, I will tell them no sit and I will pick everything back up. So they get no reward because they tried to break their command without permission. When I finally drop it and your dog maybe just flinches, but it's like, I'm not going to do it. Then I would say break and let them eat all of the treats that are on the ground, which can be one. It could be three. It could be five. I wouldn't do a ton because then you're going to fill them up and they're not going to want to keep working for you. So um, whatever rewards are on the ground, they get to have the same as if it's a toy. If it's a toy and they they flinch, but they don't break their command. That's huge progress. They get to not only get the toy, but you engaging with them and playing with them with the toy, whether that's fetch, whether that's tug, whatever it is. I just want them to know, yes, you're doing the right thing. Let's keep doing this. Um, and then we're going to progress to maybe tissues or hand towels or undergarments, bras, and underwears, things that smell really, really disgusting to us, but to dogs, they're flowers. Um, and so you want to just keep thinking, brainstorming, make a, make a list on a piece of paper, starting with the easiest at the top, working your way down to the most difficult thing you think your dog could sit through, which is usually like dropping human food on the ground. So don't drop anything that's poisonous to dogs, but things that like maybe ice cubes, plain pasta, carrots, um, Again, having your dog in a sit command on a leash in your hand. So if they try to steal the food, you can stop them. And if you don't let your dog eat, eat human food, that's fine. As you're dropping these things, pick them back up before you say break and then give them something they can have. Dog treat, toy, whatever they love in life. That's what I want you to give them. So they see there is reward in having impulse control because there is food on the ground, but it's not their typical food and you didn't give them permission to eat it but good things still come because you're going to supply them with those good things for not eating the food they shouldn't eat. Make sense? Okay. So that's your distraction ladder. The most difficult thing for almost every dog on this distraction ladder. So this is going to be at the bottom of your page is having your dog sit at the front door when somebody's there. Right. And so we don't, we, we don't start there. We don't even get there on week one. Sometimes it takes week two or week three before we get to this point. But when we get to the point of the doorway, the, out, the exterior door. I want you to have your dog in a sit command. And, and I don't know if you've ever done this in school. When I was in high school, I had to write a paper on how to do something. And I picked braiding hair. I thought it would be so easy. Like, this is what you do. Three strands, you cross them over, put a little hairband in it. Boom, done. Oh my gosh. It was like a four page paper <laughs> typed up. Um, it was crazy how many steps are involved because it's not just like if you don't have the hairband and then you braid the hair, like, crap. You have to start all back over. So starting with the basics, gather what you need, get prepared, talk about how to divide the hair evenly. And each step is an important part that sometimes we overlook because we're so used to doing it. Right. And so when you work with the doorway, break that down into every single step. So step one is going to be reaching for the, the doorknob and your dog might bolt because he's like, Oh, we're going to go outside. Boom. Trying to run out the door. You didn't even open the door. You didn't even touch the doorknob. You're just reaching, but just that one little action triggered your dog into action, right? So again, having them on the leash in your hand, no sit, bringing them back, reaching for the door until they don't care. When they don't care that you're reaching, then you touch the doorknob. Whole thing. Keep doing it until you're touching the door, then you're jiggling the door, and then you're cracking the door, and you don't progress to the next step until your dog is holding the sit command, almost like they're rolling their eyes at you, like, oh, this is boring. Good, <laughs> we're working on impulse control. Impulse control can be a little boring sometimes, right? Um, doorknob, cracking it just a couple inches, pulling it wide open. Again, your dog's still sitting there. Closing it, pulling it wide open again. Your dog's still sitting there. You step foot outside, your dog's still sitting inside. And then you come back inside and say break. And then you can go outside again after they're in a sit command again. Go outside again and then say break and they can come out and follow you. Again, we're teaching your dog impulse control, but also that trust and that communication. I am now communicating to you to be respectful of me and to look at me for guidance, right? So this is a part of the steps. Once you master the sit command and working on the doorway, then we want to start working on a place command. Place is one of my favorite commands um, because your dog can do it much longer than the sit command. The sit, they can only sit for a few minutes at a time before they start to get uncomfortable. A place command your dog can do for two hours because they can fall asleep and, and wake up still doing it. And place command basically is having a dog placed on an object they fit on. So it could be a dog bed, it could be a raised dog cot, it could be a doormat, 
whatever your dog can fit on that has a clear distinguished boundary. So you can't just say like this tile in my tile floor place on that. That's not fair. They're all the same. He can't do that, but it has to be a distinguishable item on the ground. It could be a tree stump, a diving board, anything your dog can fit on. But place means go to this object. All four feet have to be on this object and you have to stay on it until I give you permission to get off. What they are allowed to do is sit up, stand down, roll over, spin, prance, they get like the happy feet, you know, when they just kind of like do happy feet, they just can't step off, right? So your dog can be excited to see people. Your dog can be snoring. It just has a lot of uh, freedom on this cot. So breaking down the distraction ladder, just like you did with the sit command, you're going to run through all of those steps again with your dog on place, all the way up through your dog holding a place as you open that front door and step outside. Again, you have your dog on a leash. So if they do try to pull out the door, you have them on a leash and you can bring them right back inside to that place command. So all of these little steps, these are two things that I want you to focus on, sit and place, but these are going to really help you in this process of having somebody walk past your house and your dog not responding. So after your dog can place very well, then we are going to have him place by the window that he would normally bark out of, or one of them if you have several. So um, you don't want to put it right under the window because maybe your dog wouldn't be able to see, but maybe on the other side of the room so we can look out the window. And I want him to place on it. If he is still barking on his place command, I want you to maybe, um, there's a couple different things you can try here. And so again, our training is so unique because every dog that comes through our door is treated as an individual and we don't train them all the same way because just like people don't learn the same way, dogs don't learn the same way. So you can have the leash on and you can give it a little tug and say, no, enough. And your dog's like, whoa, what? Um, because normally you were just screaming behind him or maybe from another room and he just wasn't listening. But now that you've built your relationship and your communication and your trust, he's more attentive. If that doesn't work, because sometimes they're just like, I don't care about you right now. There's somebody at the window. I got to keep barking. Um, you can do something that um, maybe um, throwing treats at the cop to distract them and saying yes. And you're going to throw the treats at them as they're barking out the window. And they're going to be like barking and ignoring you. And you're going to throw the treats. And eventually you're going to be like, oh my gosh, there's food here. And they're going to start eating it. And you're going to praise that. Good, good, quiet. What a good boy. And then eventually your dog's going to see somebody walking out the window. And he's going to look to you like, hey, where's my food? But he's not barking out the window. Progress. Um, and so you're just going to keep building on this until you can get to the point where you're doing intermittent rewarding. So you're not throwing the treats every time, but maybe every... Every other time or every two to three times, don't have a rhythm, make it very unique. But eventually you're gonna get to the point where people walk by and you're always like, so where's my reward? I did a really good job. Um, and so you're making that progress. Then you can move out to the front patio or porch or um, you know, very close to your house, but very far away from the sidewalk. Again, as people walk by, I want you to work through these same exercises all over again, having your dog on a place command or a sit command as people come and, and go but working through this impulse control. So um, I'm going to end it here because I gave you guys a ton of information and I don't want your minds to explode yet. So focus on sit in place, mastering it to the point where you are ready to start having them place in front of the window or to the door. And then let me know how it goes. If you are still struggling, that's okay. It doesn't mean that my advice didn't work. It just didn't work for your dog. And it doesn't mean you're not doing it well or that you don't know what you're doing. It just means you haven't found what works for your dog. That's okay. Um, and so if it's not working at that point, done. And we'll do another video on where to progress from that point. But I don't want to overwhelm you with too much too soon. So focus on these little steps and then let's see how it's going from there. The other thing, little disclaimer, I always like to, I always feel like I have to put in there is if your dog ever has any type of reactivity or aggression to other dogs or people, this may not be something you want to tackle on your own. This might be something that you need to hire a professional for to protect you and the other animals in your house. Um, because dogs, when they are in that mode of alert, 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 oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, people, 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 there is something that's called displaced aggression. Dog is already going frantic, and as you try to redirect that attention back to you to say stop, sometimes you can get bit in that process. Um, and so if your dog has a history of any type of reactive reactivity or aggression to humans or dogs, please consult a professional in person and make sure they evaluate and assess your dog and help you on this journey safely um, because I don't want you to ever put yourself in a situation that could be dangerous for you or your dogs. Um, and so most dogs, this should be fine. 
because most dogs are not that kind of dog, but some dogs are, and that's okay. It doesn't mean your dog's a bad dog or that they're always aggressive. I'm not aggressive, but if somebody threatens my family, uh, you're going to see part of me that you probably didn't like, right? And so we all have aggressive behaviors, but some dogs go to it too quickly. Um, and so a trainer can help, again, with that impulse control and teaching them better ways to balance their emotions. So instead of going to red zone ballistic, they can be like, you know what? It's not worth it. I'm going to go lay down on my dog bed right now. Um, and so teaching them how to avoid those situations. So um, that's all I got for today. Please try these exercises. Let me know how they go. Like I said, it'll probably take a few weeks. Um, because I want you to take your time with this. It's, it's like the, the tortoise and the hare. If you go slow and you pace yourself and you make sure you master every step before you get to the most difficult thing, your dog's going to do so much better than if you sloppily rush through this and then get to that end result and your dog's not doing well and you're frustrated because we skipped some steps, right? So take your time, be patient. And then I want you to reach out again. Anybody who's trying this, reach out again and let me know how it's going. What have you tried? What did it work? What did work? And then that will help me learn a little bit more about your dog's behavior and who they are in their learning style so that we can reassess and give some more tips to try next time. All right, guys, that's all I got. Thanks so much for joining me. Again, my name is Crystal Nearman with the Dog Psychology and Training Center. And if you know somebody that this video could benefit or could really use this for their dog, please share it with them or tag them in the comments because um, we want to help and we can only help with your help. So thanks so much, guys. Bye.